in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. We gather to celebrate these sacred mysteries. We gather very consciously knowing that you desire to be here and knowing also that our hearts yearn for God in a most amazing way. Let us pause and ask forgiveness for the many, many times when we have taken the Lord for granted. The many times when we have not lived as he has asked for the times when we have not been his children. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us all of our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May our unfailing compassion, O Lord, cleanse and protect your church. And since without you, she cannot stand secure, may she be always governed by your grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us be seated for the first reading. A reading from the second book of Kings. Naaman, army commander to the king of Aram, was a man who enjoyed his master's respect and favor, since through him the Lord had granted victory to the Arameans. But the man was a leper. Now, on one of their raids, the Arameans had carried off from the land of Israel a little girl who had become a servant of Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, if only my master would approach the prophet of Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went and told his master, this and this, he reported, is what the girl from the land of Israel said. Go by all means, said the king of Aram. I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left, taking with him 10 talents of silver, still 6,000 shekels of gold and 10 festal robes. He presented a letter to the king of Israel. It read, with this letter, I am sending my servant Naaman to you for you to cure him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his garments. Am I a God to give death and life, he said, that he sends a man to me and asks me to cure him of his leprosy? Listen to this and take note of it and see how he intends to pick a quarrel with me. When Elisha heard that the king of Israel had torn his garments, he sent word to the king, why did you tear your garments? Let him come to me and he will find there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his team and chariot and drew up at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent his messenger to say, go and bathe seven times in the Jordan and your flesh will become clean once more. But Naaman was indignant and went off saying, here was I thinking, he would be sure to come out to me and stand there and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprous part. Surely, Abana and Farpa, the rivers in Damas of Damascus, are better than any waters in Israel. Could I not bathe in them and become clean? And he turned around and went off in a rage. But his servants approached him and said, my father, if the prophet had asked you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? All the more reason then, when he says to you, bathe and you will become clean. So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan as Elijah had told him to do. And his flesh became clean once more, like the flesh of a little child. Returning to Elijah with his whole escort, 
He went and stood in before him. Now I know, he said, there is no God in all the earth except Israel. The word of the Lord. My soul is thirsting for God, the God of my life. When can I enter and see the face of God? My soul is thirsting for God, the God of my life. When can I enter and see the face of God? Like a deer that yearns for running streams, my soul is yearning for you, O God. My soul is thirsting for God, the God of my life. When can I enter and see the face of God? My soul is thirsting for God, the God of my life. When can I enter and see the face of God? My soul is thirsting for God, the God of my life. When can I enter and see the face of God? Who oh, send forth your light and your truth, and let this be my guide. Let them bring me to your holy mountain, the place where you dwell. My soul is thirsting for God, the God of my life. When can I enter and see the face of God? And I will come to the altar of God, the God of my joy, my Redeemer. I will thank you on the harp, O God, my God. My soul is thirsting for God, the God of my life. When can I enter and see the face of God? Praise to you. Now is the favorable time. This is the day of salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus came to Nazareth and spoke to the people in the synagogue. I tell you solemnly, no prophet is ever accepted in his own country. And there were many widows in Israel, I can assure you, in Elijah's day, when heaven remained shut for three years and six months, and a great famine raged throughout the land. But Elijah was not sent to any one of these. He was sent to a widow at Zarephath, a Sidonian town. And in the prophets Elisha's time, there were many lepers in Israel. But none of these were cured except the Syrian Naaman. And when they heard this, everyone in the synagogue was enraged. They sprang to their feet and hustled him out of the town. And they took him up to the brow of the hill the town was built on, intending to throw him down the cliff. But he slipped through the crowd and walked away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our text today opens for us a really intriguing way of thinking. Both in our first reading and in our Gospel, there's one current theme that runs through, and that is, how do we see the action of God? What, what, require, what is required for God to convince us that God is acting? The Syrian sent with letters and pomp and ceremony and all a court of people and all of the rest of it, arrives at the prophet's house and the prophet doesn't even go out and meet him. He says, a little servant, go, go and tell him, go and bathe in the Jordan. Now, the Jordan River is mighty in our imagination because of the baptism of Jesus. But the, the Jordan River was a very muddy little thing, eh? and it still is. And, and the Syrian had these beautiful rivers in, in his homeland that was so magnificent, the water was clean, and on and on. And Jesus, with his contemporaries, had the same problem. Because this heard of all the miracles that he had worked where he was, he had come now 
to his hometown where he grew up. He gives them the, 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 the prophet Isaiah and he reads from it and says, these texts have been confirmed today and fulfilled even as you listen. And his people get angry with him. Why? Why? You know, sometimes we want God to come in pomp, ceremony, majesty, and a display of power. And sometimes we want God to act in a mighty way. And God does that when he's ready. Eh? It's not that God can't. But many times the way God acts in very subtle, very little, and very small ways. One of the problems that they had in, in the gospel with Jesus is the, is the problem of the incarnation. How could Jesus say that the text of the prophet is being fulfilled in their hearing? He is just a man. In fact, we know him. He, he is the carpenter, isn't he not? We know his parents. We, we, we know him since he's a child. How, how could he be claiming to be more than he actually is? And he says a prophet is only rejected in his own town. Sometimes because we know people too well, we don't allow them to be everything God calls them to be. And, and that is a challenge in our text today. One of, our comment, one of the commentaries on the text says something that, that shocked me. He said, you know, imagine if there was no Eucharist anywhere in the world. And this is true. Right? This isn't a commentary for today. Imagine if there was no Eucharist anywhere in the world and just one priest was alive in the world and that one priest was celebrating the Eucharist. Would you not do everything you can to get yourself there to partake in the mystery? And the point he was making is that how often do we have the Eucharist present to us? And how often do we approach it with such disdain, such lukeheartedness, such lukewarmness? How often do we approach it with, with, without a recognition of what is really in our presence? Because the bread is, looks like bread and the wine looks like wine, how often do we really recognize what we celebrate? Now that we're in the desert, and now that there's this aridity, and now that the Eucharist is not as present to us as it was before, Many, many people said to me yesterday how they yearn for God and how they yearn for the Eucharist and, and how this has taught them how precious a gift we have had that we have not taken seriously. The psalm today, you know, is a wonderful psalm. Oh, send forth your light and your truth. This psalm reminds us that in the little things, in the Eucharist, in the little things, in your family member, in the little things, in, in what we are doing in these days, in the little things, God is present to us. I would ask you for today to remember that God is with us. You see, we've determined that COVID is Christ, our victory in the desert. That's what COVID is. And in this desert to which we have been invited, Jesus Christ will be victorious. But we have to see him in the little things of our daily existence. Don't do like Naaman and wish away the prophet because he asked for something simple. Don't do like the people of Nazareth and don't see Jesus Christ because he comes in such a familiar disguise. Let us have the eyes of faith today. That in everything that we do, that we see the God who is present to us in every single moment of every day. Let us have eyes of faith. And let's pray for that in this Eucharist as we pray together. And this Mass is being offered for every single person that will participate by viewing. Every person, every one of you. This Mass is offered for you. That our eyes may be open. That we may see Christ in the little and in the big things of our life. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and 
bring our prayer before God, knowing that God's mercy and compassion is more than all of our sin sickness. Father, we pray for those who are in distress this day, those who have been affected by this virus, and those who are in a critical condition. We pray, Lord, that you may be with them and give consolation and give care to each one. Lord, hear us. We pray for all the medical workers throughout the world that you may protect them, Lord. That in all that they do, they may experience your hand of love and protection. And as they pour out their care, that they may receive your blessings. Lord, hear us. Lord, we pray for our Holy Father that you may be with him in a special way. That you may give him the courage and discernment he needs to lead the church. Lord, hear us. We pray for our nation, Lord, that you would spare us the worst of this pandemic. And through our diligence and through our actions, Lord, that you would help us to build a better Trinidad and Tobago. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We bring our prayer to the Father through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And we say a special prayer in this chapel. It's a prayer for... Archbishop Anthony Panton, that his cause may move forward speedily. O God, who by the grace of your Holy Spirit tempered the soul of Gordon Anthony Panton with fortitude and humility and raised him to be priest and archbishop of the Archdiocese of Port of Spain so that he would be bearer of your giving word to the people of Trinidad and Tobago, grant us grace to be strong in faith humbly confident in your aid, and tireless in doing good. Bestow upon us, we humbly pray, through the intercession of this beloved servant of yours, Gordon Anthony Pantin, the special grace that we seek from your sovereign goodness, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray that your sacrifice and mine may be pleasing and acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May what we offer you, O Lord, in token of our service, be transformed by you into the sacrament of salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you will that our self-denial should give you thanks. Humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Hosanna in the highest. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you drink from it. This is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy, Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our oh, Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be
At this time, we invite you at home to a spiritual communion. We celebrated the Mass here, but the Mass has been celebrated for you. As you have looked on in participation, the grace of this Mass is for you. Receive Jesus into your heart right now. Receive him spiritually into your life. And ask him today for the grace to open your eyes. That in the little and in the big things, you'd be able to see him present today. That in the interaction with your children or in the office or on the street, you will see him present. That you may not miss him as the people in Nazareth did. And you may not miss the man of God as Naaman did. But with a heart pure and open, you would experience and see him wherever he is. That today in this bread that was consecrated, in this wine consecrated, you see the presence of your, your own Lord and Savior. But in the interactions of today, see Jesus present also. And open your eyes as you yearn, as you long, as you desire this God. Open your eyes. And in that, we will find that Christ is our victory in the desert.
us pray. May communion in this, your sacrament, we pray, O Lord, bring with it purification and the unity that is your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us go, glorifying the Lord with our life. Thanks be to God. God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angel from before him, heaven and earth.